Hey Head Squeezers and welcome to another mini Q&A where we answer all the questions you've been tweeting in and Facebook in and, and writing on, on the comments below these videos. Thanks so, so much. Um, we've got snow today, just to add to the whole thing. Um, and Mr. James May dropped me a tweet and he said, Greg, I'm taking a day off. I'm actually building a time machine in my garage. Um, so we'll see him when he gets back, I guess, or, or future. I suppose. Uh, right, this, this week's FAQs are all about food, yum. Uh, we've got why can some people drink more than others, where do tastes come from, and what is in a can of spam? Brilliant. So first up, one from Twitter. This is from at when hell freezes. Kind of apt, uh, but without the H. And she says, why are some people able to drink lots, but other people can only drink a small amount? It can't just be body mass. So Alcohol is a small molecule that's really easily absorbed into the stomach and the intestines. And you get your alcohol buzz, your high, because what it does to your brain is it triggers the release of dopamine, which is known as the happy hormone. It's, it's the same neurotransmitter that's affected by heroin, cocaine, that sort of stuff. But you also get the, the dip and the horrible hangovers. That's down to the byproducts of alcohol, stuff like lactic acid and horrible stuff like that. So why does alcohol affect some people differently to others? Well, there's a number of factors. And the first one is body mass, because the bigger you are, the larger the volume you've got to dilute all that alcohol that you've guzzled. The second is how much food you've eaten. If you've got a full stomach, then, then it won't be able to absorb as much of the alcohol as quickly. And the third thing is genetics, because there are actually two different types of enzymes that you can have um, for how you process that alcohol. And if you have one, you may actually be really affected by alcohol and be tipsy after a couple of pints, like our cameraman Tom, or the other one, and you'll be absolutely fine. So um, also some people have uh, what's known as alcohol flush syndrome or Asian flush. And what they do is they literally have one drink and they will flush all over their neck and their chest and they'll feel really, really sick. That is down to genetics specifically because that's a mutation on, on one specific area, one gene that affects how you process those byproducts like lactic acid. Now that that's cleared up, uh, it's on to the second one. This one's from Twitter, from at Candy Nez, who asks, where do tastes come from? Which is a really interesting question. Um, taste is different to flavour. If I asked you to name the taste, you'd probably say salt, sour, sweet, bitter. That's just four. We now know there are at least six, including the taste of fat and the taste of meat, which is known as umami and flavour. Well, well, first up, the taste cells that are on your tongue have a little pore in them and the food chemicals fall into that pore where there are nerves and that carries a signal to your brain. So flavour is different to taste. Flavour is, is more about a combination of different senses. You've got your taste sense, yes, but, but one that's really important is known as your olfactory sense or your sense of smell because your mouth and your nose are connected. They're part of the same cavity. So when you eat food and you chew it, you release the odour molecules and they travel up and fall onto the olfactory bulb at the back of your nose. In fact, scientists say that about 85% of flavour is down to the olfactory sense. And if you've had a cold and your nose is blocked, you, you know that you can't taste very well. A really good demo, actually, is to eat a banana while you've got your nose uh, pinched like this. And you can't taste anything until you release your nose. And then you can actually taste the flavour of banana. Quite a cool demo. So talking of taste and flavour, the, the third part of our Q&A is all about something that just epitomises both. Not. Uh, it is spam. Yes, this comes in through YouTube from CMQ342, who says, what goes into spam and how is that wonderful can of goodness made? Um, I love how the definition of spam on Google is a canned meat product made mainly from ham. Uh, so, okay, what part of a pig is it exactly? What is in it? Well, if you go onto the website of the company, Hormel Foods, um, it's a mixture of ham, which is specifically pig thigh, and pig shoulder. It's a combination of the two. Two thin slices of the good stuff actually accounts for 30% of your daily saturated fat, 31% of your sodium, and 13% of the cholesterol. Yum. <laughs> The name uh, spam 
comes from spiced ham, but actually the spices that we use were just sugar and salt. And bonus fact for you, um, the use of the word spam for junk mail actually comes from Monty Python's spam song. Um, that's it. That's all the time we've got for right now. Please do send us in your questions. Remember, you can tweet us, you can Facebook us, or you can just write them in the comments below any of our videos. And if you like what we do here on Head Squeeze, please do hit subscribe. Uh, there's loads of other really great videos. And until then, I see you next time. Happy Head Squeezing. Oh.